Hello again, everybody. This is Mr. Everything. I'm coming at you with another one of my Wargaming and Miniature videos. In this video, we're going to continue on with our Sarissa building series. What I'm doing is I'm building up my American War of Independence buildings. And in today's video, we're going to build the plantation townhouse with porch and balcony. And that's going to, hopefully, it's going to turn out and look like that. All right, guys. So let me open this up, and then we'll be right back. All right, let's go ahead and continue on with this. Wow, there's a lot of instructions. Yeah, okay. So we'll try to follow those as close as possible. But yeah, let's take a look at this. This is MDF board. It's been laser cut. There's a lot of pieces that you'll be popping out and just throwing away. Uh, so let's go ahead and just pop all these out and get all the boards out. And then once I get everything popped out and set aside, I'll be right back. All right, before I finish popping everything out, I just wanted to show you this. The windows have shutters, or I should say panes of glass. You gotta pop all these out. Uh, they are pretty small. So just get them all popped out, and then I'll be right back. All right, guys, I have punched everything out. And on all these little ones, it took me forever to get all these little wood things punched out. And then all these windows, panes had these to get punched out. And boy, was that a pain. No pun intended. <laughs> yes, there was. There was a pun intended. Okay. So now, the next step is, I'm going to take an X-Acto knife, and I'm going to go over the pieces uh, that I just popped out, maybe one at a time, and I'm going to look for any imperfections on them so that they're... Because even though it's laser printed, it still needed to be popped out. And the areas that were connected to keeping it from in place might have a little extra MDF sticking up. And remember, MDF is porous, and so when you go to paint it, you're going to need to make sure you prime it first. I always prime black. That way it gets down into all the cracks and crevices and acts as a shadow. And then my colors seem to be darker and richer. Uh, but you can prime gray or white or whatever you want to prime. But when you get ready to uh, actually paint the model, make sure you paint black on the inside. All right, let me make sure I got all these guys trimmed up, and then I'll be ready. All right, I've got everything trimmed, ready to go. Now what we need to do is start assembly. Now, when we go to assemble, I like to use Aileen's Tacky Glue because it'll hold things in place while it's drying, and also it dries clear. And I make sure that I put down a piece of... Uh, wax paper so that if any glue does spill it won't stick to my board it will and then if if I have anything stuck to it I could just peel it off all right the first step is glue the external chimney stack to the back wall and that says number one okay number one is this guy which is This is the back wall, and how I know that is because it has the fireplace on the inside is cut out. So when I glue the chimney stack on there, you'll be able to have a little fireplace on the inside. And you can actually see the outline of where the chimney is. This first, that's a first. All right, so we put a little, put a little aliens on here. I spread it out with my finger. Go ahead and lay that down. Okay. I'm making it flush with the bottom here, but not the peg that sticks down. Okay. 
there it goes. Perfect. Glue the internal fireplace to the inside of the back wall. Okay, so that would be the inside here. This looks like the piece that's the internal fireplace. And it has like a little mantle along the top. Now, I'm only doing this for completion sake because when I go to play with this model, people are not going to be climbing on the inside. I'm not going to be opening up the roof and positioning models on the inside of this because I play rank and file games. Uh, but if I ever did want to make this a skirmish game, I could. And I'm going to leave the doors intact on the model. I'm not going to punch these out, even though you could punch them out and make it more of a... Oh, what's happened here? Okay. There must have been some glue residue on there from a previous building. Okay, well that's cleaned off, no problem. And you got your inside fireplace. Okay, it says fix the roof supports to the roof panels. Okay, so I'm going to set that off to the side. This is the roof panels. These are the roof supports. Okay, this looks like the front one. And that looks like the back one. It looks like it's going to go like that. I'm basing it on the picture right there. Okay. And I'm basing that based on where the holes are. Now these two supports look identical to me, so I don't think it matters which way you put them on or which side you put them on. There you go. a tight fit. That's good. You want it to be tight. You want to apply some pressure to make sure the glue adheres to it. Pressure. There we go. Snap it in place. Make sure it's all nice and tight. My finger down inside there. Smooth out the glue. Also remove any excess. I'll even smooth out the inside. Okay, now I'll go stand this up and let that dry. Okay, the next thing is glue the chimney panels and glue to the roof. Okay, so when you look at chimneys, you have a center support with a long chimney stack and then you got the bricks that are on the left and the right side. They're sloped, so you want to make sure that slope is on the bottom. On this side as well. Gives you kind of a 3D chimney effect.
Okay. Before I attach that to that, I'm going to let that dry a second while I work on this other piece. Basically doing the same thing here. Apply some pressure to allow the wood, the MDF, to grip the glue, the glue to soak in so it'll be better adhered. Okay, now that I'm done with that one, I'm going to go ahead and put this one on the roof. The tall one goes on the low hole. And then the short one goes on the upper hole. horizontal, vertical, perpendicular, what's the word I'm looking for? There you go. Now I'm going to have to set this up this way so that they can glue going upwards. Or they could dry going that way. Alright, so now we got this long process. This is the front. This is this side. This is this side. And what we're getting ready to do is glue, and this is the back side, right? Okay. What we're getting ready to do is glue door frames and window frames. These are window frames. Yeah. And the extra piece will go on the top. So when I glue this on, I'm going to glue it on like that. All right. Let's go ahead and do Line that. it up the best you can. All right. All right. Now that's going to give the walls three dimensions. Now the main door, and that's this guy, he's going to go right here on the door. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, maybe use a little bit of finger action here. Smooth it out, get it on all the little crossbars. Now I'm lining this up with the bottom of the wall so that it lays flush. And I'm centering it over the door as well. All right, so let me go ahead and get all the door frames and window frames finished, and then I'll be right back. Okay, before I put the walls together, we're going to go ahead and assemble the flooring. And I, I can see I kind of slit some stuff together here. Um, these pieces slide in on top of each other like that. So I'm going to apply a little bit of glue. This is optional. These, these uh, interior walls are totally 100% optional, but I'm going to do them. There you go. And then this has a couple of notches. Remember, this is not a skirmish building for me. But I'm going to do it because you never know in the future I might do something where I want to play a skirmish battle. 
and you, the viewer, you might want to do skirmishes. Okay. So these are glued in just like that. I'm going to set it there so it'll dry. And then this does exactly the same thing. This will be the upstairs. All right, now it's the next step is for me to put all four walls on the floor. With this balcony area being the porch, or this extra area here that's sticking out is the porch. Okay. So let me draw some straight lines. There we go. Ooh, ooh. This little piece right here wasn't punched out. There we go, it's punched. Okay. some glue to the sides and then I prepare it I'm not actually gluing it down even though it is glued down I'm preparing it to attach the sides down the holes and then just push it sideways until the four sides connect. There we go. And then the back chimney does the same. And the hole and then connect it to the side walls. Okay. This is the part where I usually put a rubber band on it to hold them all together. Pull it in nice and tight and keep it there long enough for this tacky glue to dry. Wiping off any excess all around the base. That looks good. That looks good. Okay. Now they expect you to take the interior walls and just drop them down inside. Nope, not like that, because that wall would be right against that window. So we'll do it this way. Now I could glue those interior walls in there or I could just let them sit there. I don't need to glue it in. This floor would fall into there, right? It would go inside. 
but you wouldn't be able to get it out. So you've got these upper walls, which I'm going to glue into these grooves right here. And again, I'm not going to put the wall against this. I'm going to put the wall against that. I don't think it matters because I think the top, I think this floor is even both ways, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, those are very hard to pop in, by the way. This, this side. Put some weight on that. There we go. Put this side. Almost. I don't want to break the MDF. straighten it out. Okay, so now when I drop this in, it'll rest on the floor beneath. And if I ever need to pull it out, I can just grab the, this and just pull it out. Yeah, so I'm going to leave that out. Just for now, I'm going to leave those in. Even though I could leave them in, take them out, doesn't matter. Okay, so now we're going to build the porch and the veranda. The one with the doorway is going to go in the front, like so. And this one's going to go above. So I'll set that off to the side. It looks like the bottom one is awful tall, and you'll see that there's two tall ones and two short ones. The short ones go together on the upper deck, and the small ones go together on the lower deck. So we're going to go ahead and glue all these down to the porch. apply some glue along the side here because it's going to rest against the wall of the house and I'll apply some glue on the inside side of this because it's going to rest against the front Oops, I just grabbed the glue Fit in there. It's fit. So far, it's looking good. One against the wall, floor, and the front rail.
There you go. Now I'm going to have to slide the rubber band just up a little bit because it's too low. It's going to be in the way. There we go. And then that's the roof. Okay. This floor piece is going to sit on top of this. And certain holes are going to match. And then certain holes aren't going to match because they'll go with this. But either way, I'm just going to put a little glue on them. Just like so. I'm not putting any glue against the wall. It's not necessary. Okay, so I had to go between the door frame here and the door frame there. You gotta fit the sides in, got it. You gotta fit that front in as well. There is a hole that it's gotta go in. So this has got to go left or right, depending on, there you go. Be careful not to break anything. There it is. So what that also does is it keeps these from falling out, keeps this from falling over keeps everything in place right so far so good all right now for me to put this on I'm gonna have to get rid of the rubber band or Ooh, yay okay but I think it's gonna be fine I think it's been on there long enough all right, let's glue the front on. Okay, now this roof is going to make everything fit together. I glued against the wall, I glued against each rail. Now let's Again, I'm not going to glue it up against the wall. It's going to shift. There we go. There we go. There we go. We've got all the sides connected. All right. Apply some pressure. Make sure all the rails are dry. OK, 
okay this needs to be pushed back up against the wall because it was starting to come out That's doing pretty good. Yeah, at least flat on the table. Yeah, this is extra piece. Okay. This fits on the inside. Got to go almost perfectly straight up and down to get it in there. Might throw another rubber band over this whole thing just to kind of give it a big grip. mainly because I wanted to pull that porch in close to the wall. I wanted to have some pressure against the wall. There we go, to allow it to dry there. And then this, we'll just slide right on top. Somewhere. Inside, I thought. Maybe not, maybe it's an outside rail. Oh, is this outside? Ooh, it is. Okay. Okay, so when you fit your roof on, the gable kind of goes on the outside of the wood, on both sides. That's cool. Oh, look at that. And this chimney goes right up there. That I didn't expect. Okay. So I'm going to let this dry for just a couple of minutes. And then we'll take a good look at it. Alright guys, that was the Continental American War of Independence Plantation with Terrace. I hope you enjoyed that construction tutorial. And if you want to see more of these, I am making quite a bit of these Sarissa buildings on stream. But I'm also going to be making a Renedra building, and a foreground building as well, all for my American War of Independence. So come back and check out all those. Catch you next time.